Hi. In this video, I would like to touch on the topic of natural language understanding. And in particular, the main thing I would like to talk about is how the word understanding is actually not that accurate. There are lots of machine learning models that we currently have at our disposal. And while these models are certainly useful, we're still nowhere near actual understanding of natural language. Even if we have word embeddings or fancy transformer models like BERT, it's relatively easy to show that our current algorithms don't actually understand language. And in this video, I would like to share a couple of examples that highlight that these machine learning approaches currently fall short when it comes to actual understanding. So let's focus on just a single word for now. When you read this word, do you know what meaning it has? On its own, I hope you might recognize that there are actually two meanings. Bass can be a fish, but bass can also be a type of guitar. And even though the way that we write the word down is the same for both of these two meanings, each pronunciation implies a different meaning. And at least the English language has a couple of examples of this phenomenon. For example, lead, is that a metal? Or are you leading someone? And are we talking about a verb here? Now, if we had sound at our disposal, this would be easy because lead or lead, even though it's spelled the same way, we could at least hear that it's different. But there's also words like duck, where it can really mean two things. Because if you're walking in a park and someone yells duck, then either that means that there's an animal, namely a duck, or that you have to make yourself small because there might be danger, let's say. So with these examples, I hope it's clear that a single word can have multiple meanings. And because a single word can have multiple meanings, we are immediately confronted with the fact that word embeddings, well, they might fall short. And that's because a word embedding typically points to a single numeric vector. And the same property would hold for count vectors. These would also fall short. So here's where you might think maybe transformers can be helpful. Because if I have the word duck in a sentence, like, hey, look, a duck, or another sentence, look out, duck, then at least in this scenario, you might be able to say, well, duck in the context of, hey, look, that might be something that we can represent differently than look out, duck. Now, if we're using something like a transformer model, then the embeddings that I would have for these two different instances of duck would be different because they are being used in different contexts. So we might be able to pick up that duck in sentence one is not the same as duck in sentence two. However, we will hit a similar issue even if we use transformers. What I've got here is a Jupyter notebook with what lies loaded, and I'm loading in the distill BERT model, which is able to give us embeddings for a lightweight version of BERT. Now in this cell, I've got two short utterances. One says, hey, look, a duck. And in this case, I hope it's clear we're talking about the animal. But here I'm saying, look out, duck. And I hope it's clear that in this case, we're talking about the verb. Now, what I can do is I can calculate the cosine distance between these two vectors. And hopefully, the cosine distance between these two vectors won't be small. But it seems that it's actually not big. And here's where we can start asking questions of why that might be. For starters, the whole idea behind a transformer model is that you're looking for all the surrounding words to add context. If, for example, I'm focusing in on this word duck, it would really help if there are lots of neighbors that can give me context. If we're talking about very short sentences, then we don't have that much context, so to say, to learn from. So already here, the effectiveness of BERT really depends on the length of the sentence. But there's another thing that's happening here. The word look is also being used in both sentences. And 
the word look here is being used as a commanding tense, and the word look here is also being used in the commanding tense. In both cases, the word look is trying to grab the attention of someone. So even though for a human it should be relatively clear that this is an animal and this is a verb, you should still be able to imagine that for a system like BERT, there's really a lot of similarity between these two sentences. And that means that we gotta wonder, well, are we really understanding language here? Or are we merely quantifying it by representing it as a vector, where what the vector exactly means isn't necessarily clear? There is also another phenomenon that's happening here. And to explain that, I'll need to zoom in on the architecture diagram from the Attention is All You Need paper. You see, if we just look at the encoder part of the architecture, then at the bottom here, we've got word embeddings going in. We then have a positional encoder, but really most of the magic that's happening is happening here in this multi-head attention mechanism over here. And inside of that multi-head attention mechanism, we have this scaled dot product attention. If you're interested in more details on how these mechanisms exactly work, I highly recommend you check the videos on this topic in this channel. But one particular detail that's important for us to recognize is that the main component here that adds the context that's independent of the order of the words that are going in here. Our attention mechanism doesn't really care about the order in which the words appear, it just cares about which words appear in the collection. The only part of this algorithm that actually cares about the order of the words is this positional encoding. But this positional encoding is constant. The positional encoding itself does not depend on the input that's going in here. And if we now keep that in mind, as we scroll back up again, and we look at the example, if I were now to switch around two words, the cosine distance would be nearly the same, even though what I've now generated here is something that grammatically doesn't make any sense anymore. Most machine learning models, BERT and transformers included, make this bag of words assumption. They assume that a sentence is nothing more than a collection of words that appear. Now, this assumption makes it very practical to come up with algorithms, but the assumption is plain wrong. Language is more than just a bag of words. And there's a couple of other examples that I would like to show you just to highlight this fact. I've got another example here. The first sentence reads, man bites dog, and the next sentence reads, dog bites man. Now, these two sentences contain the exact same words. However, as far as the actual definition and meaning of these two sentences, I really hope you would agree that they don't mean the same thing. And explicitly, I almost feel as if this sentence over here is an outlier of sorts. I can definitely imagine this sentence appearing in a body of text. However, man bites dog? Well, if that sentence appeared in a book, I would read the sentence twice just to make sure I didn't misread. However, even though these two sentences have completely different meanings, this model that I'm using to encode these sentences is based on this bag of words assumption. So that means that these vectors that come out are expected to be very similar. And indeed, the cosine distance is very small. And what I can even do, just as a thought exercise, is I can shuffle all of these words around and try out every single permutation of these words. When I do that, I can generate this distance chart, where if the distance is small, we would be close to zero and we would expect a yellow color here. We do see some very mild fluctuations. It's not like every single cell has the same value, but these fluctuations are due to positional encoding. And the reason why we see such low distance has to do with the fact that the bag of words assumption demands it. And when you think about things like outlier detection, I hope you understand that it is tricky. I can shuffle words around in such a way that grammatically the sentence doesn't even make sense anymore. 
But by and large, even a model like BERT isn't necessarily understanding that language is more than just a bag of words. So that's something to keep in mind whenever you're making your own natural language pipelines. You might wonder though, if these models don't understand language, then how come that they're accurate? And that's a fair question, but the answer to that question is relatively simple. Let's say that this blob represents the English language. Well, typically if you're working on a natural language processing pipeline, then you're not looking at the entire English language. You're more likely just looking at a very specific subset. Maybe it's legal text, maybe it's academic articles, or maybe it's a virtual assistant. But it's because you're working on a subset that you also shouldn't expect to see all the different variants of text that the English language has to offer. And it's this subset that allows us to maybe make models that don't necessarily understand the language, but they are able to make predictions. As long as we can make sure that we understand the subset that we're working on very well, then we might still be able to get away with models that don't actually understand the underlying text. But one thing that we should keep in our mind is that it's not necessarily understanding what these models are doing. They're merely predicting and approximating instead.